Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, maybe your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. Little Mac, the bruiser from the Bronx, and Springman, the bouncer. Which of Nintendo's professional punching powerhouses will win in a match to the death? This is Universes. Now both fighters in this episode don't have much in terms of story, like Little Mac being the underdog who became champion and nothing more, for example. So instead, I think I'll go over my personal history with each fighter, just for fun. I discovered Punch-Out! years ago on the virtual console of the original Wii. Remember the Virtual Console? Ah, uh, good times, good times. Anyways, I didn't think much of the game at the time, just another NES classic and nothing more. Plus, I sucked at it. It wasn't until a year later, until I got Punch-Out! Wii, where I truly understood the genius of the game. The cleverness behind the gameplay, the art style, the cast of colorful characters, I fell in love with the game, and in front of it was our fighter Little Mac. Ever since that game, Mac has been one of my personal favorite characters, even becoming my main in Super Smash Bros. Little Mac is obviously a boxer, and as such, he only relies on punching. Mac uses the orthodox stance, meaning he stands with his weaker side towards his foe while his dominant side is back a bit to build up even more power when taking a swing with it. Since Mac stands with his left side pointed towards his enemies, this obviously means he's right-handed. Little Mac's strategy relies on hanging back until his enemies make a mistake before rushing in with a punishment. He's the textbook definition of a right-handed outboxer, one of the most common in the sport, so clearly this style works. Mac has jabs, hooks, uppercuts, and a special punch of his own called the Star Punch. By striking his opponent at a certain time, he can build up energy to use later in one of these powerful blows that can knock them off their feet. He's got another trick up his sleeves though in the form of Giga Mac. In exchange for his signature style and speed, Mac gains incredible power as he grows in size like the Hulk. So far, Mac's only weakness is his low stamina that can run out if he gets hit too much or misses too many punches. He doesn't even let his height get in the way. Now let's take a look at the feats that help confirm why you shouldn't let his size fool you. Mac has faced tons of boxers that tower over him, weigh hundreds of pounds more than him, and have very superhuman attributes. Mac himself, according to the in-game timer, is able to throw four full punches in a single second. He can keep pace with boxers like Piston Hondo who can outrun a bullet train, the fastest of which travels at over 300 miles per hour. To prove this counts for reaction and attack speed too, Piston Hondo can create after images with his punches. When it comes to power, Mac can defeat Bald Bull who can survive a bull's charge, he can defeat Mr. Sandman who can tear down a building by punching through its brick walls, and Don Flamenco, who can punch a bull out of a stadium. This requires a force of 114,000 joules, or .00003 tons of TNT. Don't let that small number fool you though, it's still enough to bust through walls, proving the previous feats are consistent. Add that to beating Punch-Out's own version of Donkey Kong who can shake the boxing ring with his punches, and you've got yourself one monster boxer. Just like with Mac, there's no real story to be had with Springman aside from wanting to win a tournament and defeat the great Max Brass. So again, I'll start off with my personal experience related to the character. Now before, I had little to no interest in ARMS. While not an FPS game, I did feel like it was just Nintendo's answer to Overwatch for me. I mean, Ninjara? Mechanica? Could they be any less subtle? But I actually ended up getting it specifically for researching this episode, and I have to say I actually enjoy it quite a bit. Definitely not worth the $60 price as it is a bit lacking on the content side, but gameplay wise I had a pretty decent time. I'm not sure if I main Springman yet or not, but he's the one I spent the most time with, obviously. So overall I do enjoy the character even though he isn't anything too special to me. Perhaps he'll be able to rival Mac as my main if he joins Super Smash Bros 2. In the universe of arms, nobody has regular arms. Instead, they have super long extendable springs with fist-like weapons at the end. Now on the show, we have had fighters with massive arsenals that can change loadouts on the fly. But Springman cannot do this, so we'll only be including his base loadout. The first of three weapons in it being the Toaster, a standard boxing glove that when charged up gains attributes of fire. The second is the Boomerang, a wind weapon that can send out a cyclone when charged. The third is the Tribolt, a weapon that sends out multiple strikes at once and has the ability to stun when charged. 
And when taking or giving enough damage, Springman can activate Rush Mode, where he sends out a barrage of these charged moves. To charge them out of Rush Mode though, Springman has to use his Energy Shield, which he can generate himself. He can dash and jump out of this shield, but can't keep it up at all while making any kind of movement, which is one of his few weaknesses. Striking his fist as it extends can also cause it to go limp and retract before he can punch with it again. Also, taking a hard enough hit will stun him completely for a few seconds, and he clearly sucks at close range combat. Since his arms use spring technology, they have little to no power at short distances. But definitely be careful when he's out of your reach. He's one force to be reckoned with at a distance. Springman can shatter stone pillars with his arms and is able to go toe to toe with Max Brass, who uses the Kablammer, a weapon designed for demolishing buildings. Likely not in a single hit, behaving more like a wrecking ball, but it's still impressive. And it ends each hit with an explosion. Speed wise, Springman is capable of dodging missile based arms and arms weapons that can even fire laser beams. The average missile travels at around 550 miles per hour, around the high end of subsonic speeds. Now laser beams in fiction don't always travel the speed of light, so it'd be unreasonable to assume Springman is able to reach the speed from dodging them. Keeping him at subsonic levels from dodging missiles is definitely the more consistent route to go with. So with a spring in his step, can Springman match Mac? Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. You are screaming me out. This is actually happening. Yes. Well, I was going to make this, but whatever. What's up, guys? J Diamond Sonic here, and this is Little Mac vs. Springman. Yes, he's actually doing it. This is my, this is going to be my favorite. Now, before I get on to I think that who is going to win, let's talk about their strength, speed, and abilities. Now, first up is strength. Now, the strength advantage, the point of the strength would go to Little Mac. Since Little Mac have the strength advantage, and for the categories, well, mostly Spring Man has the most strength advantage, because... Not, not just his metal fist arms, it's just that something that he usually did is that something that his arms are usually competing to is that he has three many different arms. One is the basic arm, two can usually somehow, I don't know, and three can usually sling out things. For Little Mac, he just has bare fists, but they're fists of steel. If he can usually take down Spring Man, he would have the opportunity. Next is speed. Now this speed category would go to Little Mac. Now, since the Spring Man is pretty much fast, but not as fast enough to keep up with Little Mac, he's usually fast enough to out. He's usually fast enough to keep up with Sonic. Well, not as fast as Sonic, but still, Little Mac is usually faster than Spring Man and can keep up with things every time that he likes. Even also can keep up with a motorcycle, a bicycle, or a car. You name it, everything that he would have. Everything that he'll outrun would be those vehicles. For Spring Man advantage, you know, you can only gain power up. You can only power up by using just a green lover thingy, whatever. Well, the green thing lets them regenerate, and for some reason, and I think for and for uh, for yellow, for yellow thing of type, he usually has the uh, rev like he usually have many power ups if he drinks or grabs the yellow thing that they call it so for the durability advantage will be a tie but I will give the point to spring man because he's strong enough to lay out big punches same thing to little Mac it would be a tie for durability well he ha well little Mac has more durability on his site well little Mac usually take punches from uh, King Hippo glass Joe von Kaiser uh, Sandman Super Macho Man, Bald Bull, Soda Popinski, you name it. Spring Man, on the other hand, has damaged more than outrun classic players, which he usually fought Ribbon Girl, but actually won, I think. Yeah. But he, but Spring Man or Little Mac, but Spring Man or Little Mac can usually take it. Post it down in the comments below, Leo. Well, you need to figure out this, but. Okay. Now it's time for the big reveal. For who I think is going to win, this universe is. Some of you might vote for Little Mac, and some of you might vote for Spring Man. But for my predictions, I think that the winner will be Spring Man! Yes, I'm sorry, bro. 
And if you're new to Leopold the Brave, please subscribe to his channel. That would be polite and kind for you. And please subscribe to me as well. And be sure that would be polite to me. And everybody, and Leo, check out my Lewis video of a. Uh, check out my Fortnite video, Leo, and check out the uh, latest update video that's gonna come out in like a few month, a few days ago. Uh, is going to be Slenderman versus Enderman on Ultra Fighting Mission Season Three. Thanks for watching. Peace out. And the results are in. The winner is. Springman! Now don't get me wrong, it wasn't a stomp like people thought it would be, but the odds still leaned in Springman's favor. And I'll go ahead and get Donkey Kong out of the way before the comments are filled with it. When a character appears outside their own game, it's called a crossover, which is clearly non-canon for them, which means Mac isn't fighting the canon moon-punching DK. Even if he was, Punch-Out Wii came before the moon thing happened, so DK wouldn't be as strong anyways. There! Now on to the strength category. Springman can survive hits from and defeat Max Brass, who uses the Building Demolishing Kablammer weapon. Even if it doesn't destroy buildings in a single hit, it mimics a Wrecking Ball which does a considerable amount of damage, and even explodes after every hit. Mac may appear equal from scaling to Mr. Sandman, but he also didn't destroy a building in a single hit. The most we see him do is punch through brick walls, and by the end of it, several walls are still standing behind him, which means he clearly didn't even destroy the entire building at all. Springman should take the advantage no problem, but we still have lots more. Max speed is enough to keep up with Piston Hondo, who can outrun 300 mile per hour bullet trains. But if you remember, Springman can dodge missiles and laser based weapons that can reach speeds of 550 miles per hour. And he clearly has the range advantage as well. You could make the argument that Mac could play into Springman's weaknesses of stunning his arms and rushing in for close combat, but Springman still has shields he can create, the speed advantage to get away, and the arsenal to keep Mac away. Springman has incredible mobility with his dashing and jumping, and many projectiles like his boomerang and cyclones to keep his distance. Things don't get better for Mac when his gigaform comes into play either. The only thing he gains is power and size. He sacrifices what little speed and strategy he had. Springman already has the advantage there. Plus, Little Mac can defeat his own transformation, so how useful is it really? With Springman's stat lead and the arsenal to keep Mac from using his best strengths, the Pink Hooded Puncher gets pounded. The winner is... Springman. Boy, yeah! Get ready for the next battle. It's time for a Disney Doom.